in the year's 1879, but the history's not our own. Everything changed on July 3rd, 1863, during the Battle of Gettysburg. The dead rose up, the shadows darkened, and a reckoning had begun. Humanity's worst nightmares now walked the waking world. Everything seemed to be headed to hell in a handbasket. Humanity, however, is more resilient than the terrors expected. A secret war began between the darkness and those who would stand against it. A few sturdy folks from all walks of life, from school moms to nuns, from snake oil salesmen to steadfast soldiers and children to old coots, have risen up to stand between their fellow humans and creatures born in the very pits of hell. Some were fated to fall, but others stood firm. For the next hour or so, sit back and listen to the stories of horror and heroism, recounting of the sacrifices these unsung heroes have made. Enjoy these tales from the Deadlands. Be warned, however, these tales are not for the faint of heart. Hello and welcome back to the Knights of the Smith Dinner Table actual play production of Tales from the Deadlands. So when last we left our, what was the word we were using last time? I don't Western know. weirdos. That's it. Western weirdos. Um, they had spent a night in doing a lot of research. Now, sadly, on this recording night, we will not have Mike. He had some issues he had to take care of in real life, and we are big proponents of take care of yourself first and worry about the game later. But without further ado, we'll step right back in. Everybody has had a good night's sleep. You guys have picked up an advancement, which I think everybody but Mike had done theirs. Um, let me look. Yes, Mike has not done his. I think the only other one I would think of. All right. Yep. So it looks like everybody has picked up their advancement. And uh, we can take a moment to, to talk about that. So, Nick, what did Cole pick up? Well, Cole picked up Natural Leader, which allows his command to affect wild cards as well. Perfect. Daisy. Is I'm a little bit stronger. Yeah, increase in strength die type. And how about Tilly? Tilly picked up Occult and Latin. Perfect. And Goodman. I believe I gave my, I upped my, I, I gave myself the research skill. And if I'm, oh, one sec. I actually wrote this down, didn't I? Where is that? Where are ah, you, damn it? You didn't put it in your description block. Did I not? No. What the fuck? Did that not save? <laughs> was it research in a cult or? And no, it was research and then it wasn't a cult. Uh, I think I might have upped my healing by a D4 from D4 to D6. Ah, that would make sense. Because I had been doing a lot of that. So it was it, those two, I think, were the ones that I ended up. There we go. I fixed your note for you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so the next morning, I believe you guys had an invitation to go see Big Ears Tam. Yeah. And... uh as you get up, breakfast is ready. Um, both Dillinger and Pennington Smythe are sitting there. And Pennington has the latest copy of the Tombstone Epitaph. And as he's looking through it, he says, hmm, I think this might be for you folks. And he opens it up and lays it out and points to a very small article on page 13. And as each of you look over at it, I will bring that up for you. Wait a second, where'd it go? Here we go. And I will share it with everybody. And if you guys remember correctly, the label Good Intentions, Lacey did say, was intended for you folks. So 
So we need to make it to the Fallen Angels Saloon and Perdition by Saturday. Which is tomorrow. How far away is it? Uh, by train? You would get there by tomorrow. Tomorrow noon? Easily, yeah. So we'll go see Tam and jump a train. Or at least ride a train. I, I hope you're not going to, like, rob a train. Because that's what I think no. I would say, jump it. Okay. Well, there um, was this one time Mama there. used to tell me <laughs> this story. And she, she was on a train. And someone jumped on. And it was scary. But she made it okay. I think it was Dada, Papa. <laughs> I think that's how they met. It could be. We don't know. All right. Uh-oh, she's leaning towards the mic again. I know. <laughs> Seriously, I need to put a camera on my <laughs> wife. <laughs> I need to get a second green screen to put behind her and put a camera on my wife because I really think that her expressions when she's playing would sell this character even more than she already does. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> okay, so you guys going to head on over to Tam's place? Yeah, it seems the yep. right thing to do. All right. I ironic that that he's not here for the night that we've got to go and talk to Big Ears Tam. It is a little ironic that this is his mess that we're about to clean up. <laughs> I mean, that's valid. So, but but I will leave out any like actual in character complaining about that. Just know my character is going to be disgruntled about that amongst us. <laughs> yeah, he's he's got a <laughs> We're going to say that this morning he's got a terrible case of the runs. Oh, no. <laughs> some Chinese food will fix you right up. Some rice will <laughs> bind that right up, bro. You've got so much rice, dude. <laughs> well, he probably made chicken sushi by mistake. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> a little bit of salmonella poisoning. I hate chicken, not salmon. Duh. Fucking God damn it. All right. So... Uh, Pennington Smythe says he will go and buy your tickets for you. So that way you guys can hop the train south. And uh, as generous. you guys make your way through town, uh, it's still early enough that not a whole lot of people are out and about on the road. So it, it only takes you about 15 to 20 minutes to walk over. And as you approach the gates to Tam's palatial estate, <clears throat> um, you see one of the guards there who looks you up and down and pulls out a small piece of paper, looks it over, looks back at you guys, looks over the paper, looks at the guy next to him, and the guy next to him just nods his head. And he says, you're supposed to meet Tam, yes? I believe that's correct. Mm -hmm. We have a lunch meeting. Unfortunately, Tam not available. He had to go to Portland. Oregon? <laughs> he looks puzzled by the name Oregon. No, Portland. Out of character, I'm not sure if that's an in-world thing that he's not aware of what that is, or if I am the one that's actually like talking crazy, because... Portland is a city in Oregon, right? Like yes. that. I'm not. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure that like this isn't something because Lost guards. Angels is is a different name than what it's supposed. So, yes. Mm, okay. And Shanfan <laughs> is a different name as well. Um, I'm very proud of him yeah. for picking up these little um, nuances. See, like that's the thing. Is like I'm not. I just wanted to make sure that like Portland is a different. Like that's not close to here, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. Um, Oh, and uh, I mean, gate guards in this time period were not chosen for their smarts. 
as much as they're brawn. They're brawn. Of course, we got Anders. <clears throat> he's my boy, but he's uh, not the brains of the operation, nor is he the face. <laughs> what kind of gate is? It? It's a big wrought iron gate. Uh, is it opened at all? No, it is currently closed. Is there any like man doors? Mm -mm. Any place a little little kid might be able to. <clears throat> I mean, squeeze through. you could probably squeeze your body through. <clears throat> I have a little head. No, no, you don't. <laughs> Shut up. I mean, you're still small enough that your your head is a sizable portion of your body. Yeah, it's real. It's real T-Rex hours. Big head, little arms. She is sitting across the table staring at me. I'm just waiting to hear what happens next. <laughs> well, that's that's up to you guys. Well, I was going to try and sneak in, but it sounds like there's no spot for me to. No, no good spot. No, no, like spots where the dog especially dug not, the gate. especially not here in front of the guards. Well, I mean, if they're talking grown up talk, I. I can go play with my dolly. Okay, you're gonna go play with your dolly. How far I'll, away? Uh... I am looking for a place to get in. All right, you'll or need a place to I make... can climb over the wall or something. Like that. You'll need to make a notice check. While she's doing this, would I be able to chat up notice. the guards to try and like distract them from what she's trying to do? Um. I would say yes. Um, you don't know what I'm trying to do, though. I, well, this is one you, of those, like, metagaming can work for us. <laughs> you, I, I can uh, do my usual chatty thing, and you can just have the distraction for free. You notice that, I mean, you've got the wrought iron gates. They're done up in the Chinese style. And then the wall is all, like sandstone but as you're getting as you find a spot that you know is going to be perfect to climb over that's when you see something kind of shiny up on top of the walls and as you scoop back a little bit so you can get a better view and then you scoop back a little more and then you're like you know what screw this i'm going to climb a tree so i can see better you crawl up the tree and you look and embedded into the cement that they used is glass broken glass all along the top of the wall Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, they are serious about their security. James, she's, she's we gave him a fourth a advancement. We're going we're gonna to clown on them. We're going to style on them. We only got three <laughs> advancements, James. Oh, no. Broken glass atop the, the roofs. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm going to... Uh... Reach under my duster and pull out the martial artist armband and brown belt and hand it to the guard. And just tell him, he looks Tam will know what this is. He nods and says, okay. Now, make sure he gets it when he gets back, because we got to go run an errand for ourselves, and we don't know when we'll be back. Oh, oh, my wife is holding the timeout symbol at me. Oh, she has a question for me. So I, I'm going to mute myself for a moment. Do 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 Which means I can delete this from my inventory. Oh, the your funny martial artist band? Oh, the armband and the brown belt. Okay. Brown belt in Minecraft. She was uh making passes at me. You guys didn't need to hear that. I see. I was out here, out here taking shots below the belt, but constructively off mic. Very important. Yes, yes. No, seriously, though. Um, so you hand over the belt, brown belt, and he looks puzzled. And then when you tell him to give it to James, he's like, ah, yes, yes, yes. The belt and the armband. Ah, yes, 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 yes. You go now, yes? Yeah, we have to... 
run an errand elsewhere as well, but we'll be back as soon as we can to have a meeting with him. Do you know when he'll be back? No, no. Well, err on the side of caution. Tell him we'll be back in about a week's time, maybe. Mr. Cole, I want to go. Yes. I don't want to go on the train, though. Don't worry. You won't have to go if you don't want to. You can, you can stay here with Chuck. Chuck's going to ride the train, though. We walk. You know how far do we have to walk? Oh. So, what's the farthest you've ever walked before? In one day. A very long way. Well, we have to make it a very, 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 very long ways in one day. But why? So, well, we have a meeting, and I'm going to kind of like scoot her away so we can kind of walk away from the guards and start heading back to where we need to go as I'm explaining to her that we have to go see. Uh, Lacey. I like Lacey. Lacey was my sister. I miss Lacey. She was my favorite sister. But this is Mr. Oh, no, no. Lacey. Lacey the, yeah, this is Lacey this the is boy. Mr. Lacey. Yeah. Lacey's a boy. But yeah, he's, he, he, he's, he told us to come ride the train to come see him. But Mr. Cole. Yes, Miss Daisy. Think about... All the times I've been on the train. We were on the train when Papa hopped on and met Mama. I wasn't there, but I know that happened. And we well, were on that the sounds train. like a good thing. No, <clears throat> there's more to that story, but I'm trying not to talk too long, Mr. Cole. We were on the train. I was after my whole family died and I was going out to visit my aunt. She was going to take care of me. And you remember what happened on that train ride? I got uh, to shoot a bunch of people. <laughs> did, did you ha did you enjoy that? Not the train ride of it. But if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have met you and Mr. Mr. Chuck. And then we went down the hole in the train. And do you remember in the hole there was the, the digger machine? And it was like yep, the one that you played with. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Um, and I got to got to shoot a bunch of people there, too. Well, they weren't people. They were like dirt things or something. I don't know what they were, but I got to save you guys. And then we took another train somewhere. <laughs> Where did we get that train? Didn't... That was the underground train. Yeah. Oh, didn't people jump in the train? Yeah. That was the other train. That was the that was the third train. Do you since you met me? Do you see bad things happen in train? This is not well, going to be this is not going to be a good ride. Mr. Cole. It, 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 it sounds like the, the at least the first two times you had a lot of fun yeah, when it came to the train ride. So, so far, auntie. well, we can still go see her, but you'll have to take the train to go see her still, but too. She lives in California. Yeah, we're going we're going somewhere else in California to look for her. Are you sure you think we'll find her? Maybe. Do you remember where she lives? Besides California? It's definitely California. Not here? But not here. I don't know. Do they have a teacher here? They have a couple teachers here, but I don't think she was one of these teachers. Well, then now, it's probably not her. I'm assuming you guys are walking while talking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we are walking back to go get our, our tickets. I uh, I was Mr. still going to try and pursue the train. What was that, Luke? 
I was going to try and persuade this uh, dude to, because I, I don't feel these guys are giving us everything. I, I really feel that they're uh, they're holding out on us. That, that there's no reason why yesterday they would have been like, "Hey, you can come and talk to us tomorrow. We need a favor from you." And then suddenly it's like, "Nice in Oregon, dog." Um, make a common knowledge roll with a minus two. Doc Tilly, are you coming on the train? Yeah, but I think I'm going to go and try to persuade him a little bit more because I don't think he's telling us everything. Actually, anybody who wants to make that roll can. Pretty hot. So we've got Goodman coming in Was with it? 11. Uh, minus two. Do I want common knowledge or persuasion? Common knowledge, because this is before the persuasion rule. Mr. Cole. Yes, Miss Daisy. I want a new toy. <laughs> Maybe we can find you a new toy. Maybe Mr. Lacey has a new <gasps> toy for you. Do you know where I found so. Dolly? <laughs> On the train? On the train! So, Goodman, as you're thinking about it, um, the information that you've picked up, both from the books and the local papers, as well as Pennington Smythe and uh, Dillinger, is there are various warlords of the triads and one of them does happen to be in Portland. Uh, so he might be going up to have a meeting with said uh, warlord of Portland. Seems kind of stupid and shitty of him to like call us yesterday to be like, come on over to our house and play Xbox. And then literally we show up and it's like, oh, there's no Xbox. And also, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, and Tilly, with that three, um, you're you're not sure. So yeah, odds are these guys don't know what's going on, but you're fairly certain that there must be some kind of a political thing going on for him to suddenly leave for Portland. All the tick stupid bullshit. <laughs> And I'm going to uh, kind of shake my head and make my way after uh... Daisy and uh, Cole. thank you, G Cole, Cole Cassidy and uh, Daisy. I know Daisy's the one that everybody knows. She's the one who has fans. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't take you very long to get back. You gather up the tickets from Pennington Smythe, and you guys are able to just barely make the train. Um, and for the next... I'm going to give Mr. Smythe a big hug and tell him that it was so nice to meet him and wish him the best of oh, This took about an hour... So uh, he hugs you back and he says, it was my pleasure, little miss. I have a toy. Unfortunately, I do not. But maybe when you come back, I'll have something for you. I'm going to give a big squeeze and go hop on the train, skipping. Okay. All right. So. Because he thinks we're coming back. As the train ride happens, you guys arrive at 10 a.m. the following day, which, in case anybody at home is following, is Saturday, January 10th, 1880. Did I find any toys on the train? Um, you can make a notice check. Notice, notice, notice. There you are. We really had an uneventful train ride. You did. Og. 
That's a dub. That's a that's a huge dub. Massive wins. What was that, Cheryl? Uh, it's not popping up. Oh, there it is. It popped up twice Ooh. on our screen. Ooh. Boo! I'll spend the Benny on it. Okay. At least a not a failure. That is true. That is a total of four. And uh, of all the things you find, you find this weird little top. It's got a, for a ball. string that, that wraps around it, and it's kind of square except for the point at the bottom. And apparently somebody left it underneath their seat. Is there writing on the sides? There is, but it's in a language you don't understand. Looks like a bunch of squiggly lines. I had my best friend back home. Who is Jewish? Is it a dreidel? It is a dreidel. Oh my goodness. I'm like so excited and so happy. And I like hug it and put it in my backpack and I give it to Dolly because Dolly really wants to learn how to play. And I don't really know how to play. I just know what they are because I'm <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but I am eight years old. And I know about the Clearly. <laughs> Seriously, guys, I'm going to put a camera on her. Oh, we may have to start recording this through StreamYard. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm just sad Chuck's not here for me to talk. Right? He, he has been in the lavatory almost the whole trip. I'm going to pound on the door after I find it, though. Chuck, 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 Chuck. I found a new toy. I found a new toy for Dolly, Chuck. <laughs> Man, I thought I was the one who had the, the trouble magnet. Chuck literally got his one bath, the one night of quiet, <laughs> and now this. The man do be shitting his brains out an entire train ride later of just a small child with a dreidel screaming his name on the other side of the door. Chuck, 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 why are you shitting so much? Oh, my God. Did not say that. He didn't say that, but like definitely a special hell for me would be a small child asking me <laughs> like what's wrong if I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> that that seems like a recurring nightmare somebody could be having. That's so, awful. <laughs> I'm going to peel back the uh the curtain a little bit and I can tell you my wife so far is perfectly channeling our 3-year-old son. Perfectly. <laughs> we live with this life. <laughs> All right. The humor is in the is in real life. Find humor in life. Beautiful. <laughs> so as you guys get off the train and make your way into the suburb <coughs> of perdition. Heading you know to what? the I'm sorry. suburb of oh, perdition. Okay. Um it's a small section of Lost Angels that is right at the edge of the main city itself. Um, make your way to the fallen angel saloon, which takes you a little bit because you got to ask around. And the thing that all of you noticed as you're making your way through town is, well, people looked hungry up in, uh, Shanfan down here. They look downright starving <laughs> and the, having been in the two different places now, you, you definitely noticed that. Did we bring Chuck's wagon? No. So we are planning on going back to Yes. Um, so don't lose Daisy because she might disappear. I mean, she's not they're that hungry. Rabbit. She's not roof rabbit, but. Any port in a storm. Um, I mean. <laughs> and as you guys go in, you get a table. And once you're sitting down and relaxed, about 10 minutes later, you see Lacey walk in. He's in his trademark white suit. He's got a fedora on his head. Lacey! He looks around 
And as Daisy squeals, he smiles and turns and sees you guys and walks right over and has a seat with you guys. Daisy has a so gun much and shoots. <laughs> we were last together. Ah, well, that's. I found a dreidel. That is excellent, young man. Do you have any toys for me? No, no, unfortunately, I don't. Daisy, did I tell you my sister, my favorite sister's name? Indeed, you did. You're not as nice. I'm sorry, but grown up matters do tend to take up all of my time. How you been, Lacey? And he looks at the at the rest and he says, quite well and quite busy. Um, he looks around to make sure nobody's paying undue attention to you guys. And then he leans in a little bit so that way only you guys can hear him and pitches his voice as such. And he says, well, I'm sure you remember our little mission during the Battle of Lost Angels and our failure to locate a certain friend of mine. Samuel uh, yes, Hellman of course. wrote the book on Reverend Grimm, literally. He filed a lengthy report to the agency that was less than flattering for Grimm and his cult. Anyway, Hellman suspected Grimm and his minions were sacrificing folks for some nefarious reason, but before he could prove anything, he disappeared. Now, I have a friend who's a stonemason, and he recently went out to Grimm's prison in the Bay, the Rock, and was unfortunate enough to see where they keep their prisoners. He knows Sam and swears he saw him being hustled down a hallway just before he started the work that he was hired for. I can't imagine that he and Grimm are having tea, and I know that I have no right to ask what I'm about to, so I won't sugarcoat it. I need your help to break into the Rock and get Hellman out of there. Now. Before you say no, I do have a plan that might help. I've persuaded a certain maze rat who owes me a favor to make a raid on the rock. While he's doing that, you guys slip in through a drain my stonemason friend was hired to seal up. He uh, left it less than sturdy, let's say, for just such an emergency. I mean, Lacey, you, you only have to ask it. I don't know why you ever would assume we'd say no. We are breaking into the most secure prison this side of the Mississippi. And I've seen crazier things that have happened in the last fortnight. Absolutely. Let's go. How about What's the, the plan? <laughs> well, I was just like shuffles around like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's a little sus. There, there's a high possibility we could uh, potentially run into a couple of fellers I know in there. So, Mr. Cole, I don't don't tell me Cole Cassidy's getting cold feet because a couple of people he's put in prison who are rightfully there. There's a couple of people I might know in there too, Cole. Yeah, your mom and dad. No, Mr. Goodman. They're dead. They're very dead, <laughs> yes. I'm aware, Daisy. I'm aware. <laughs> Doc Tilly, do you know anyone in jail? Prison? Uh, no, but I might once I get in there. <gasps> we might make new friends. I don't know that we'd call them friends. Best friends? Well, if all of you were in, I do have, as I said, a plan. The maze rats won't attack in the broad daylight, but they will use their small fleet of probably half a dozen ships or so to uh, make a run on the side that's opposite of the storm drain also happens to be that side that has the docks now as for the entrance itself the sewer pipe is what my friend was hired to work on 
to anybody looking at should look exactly like it is perfectly entrenched and nothing short of a bundle of dynamite will break it loose. But he told me that on the inside of it, he attached a special little lever that will pop it loose and make it possible for us to open it and just walk right in. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a crumpled up piece of paper and uncrumples it for you guys. And there you go. Now, this is the rough map that my friend drew. As you can see, there's the sewer pipe there leading in. He said that the, the round room there is some kind of cesspit. Um, this is sewage, so we will get a little dirty. There's a ladder that leads out of the cesspit and up into the power room, and that provides the power for all of the rock. <clears throat> now, he said that he saw Hellman in being pushed into uh, one of the cells, but whether or not they keep him in the same cell is up for debate. The cell that he saw him pushed into was, oh, I can't actually point it out on the map. It was the uh, one in the bottom left here of the map. Or like those two lines kind of like disjointedly meet there? Yeah, he was he was drawing it in a hurry. As you can see, the artwork is not the best. Also not judging at all, just more like a, a visual landmark. <laughs> so I'm going to make you guys observers on that. So you will be able to open it and take a look at it at any time. <clears throat> and that will appear in the journal section, which is get my mouse back on the right screen uh that one right there now i know that the viewers can't see the one that i just highlighted but the players can see it so doot, doot. <clears throat> now that being said my friend will use his boat to take us out <laughs> All right, so we're going the cover of night. Indeed. We have a boat. And we're coming up in the power room. I'm assuming the plan is to cut the power. That is purely optional. Though I am certain that uh, the pirates would appreciate that. I mean, now, I don't know my next question <laughs> is... How do we open the any... cell door? Pick the lock. I don't know how to do that. I'm certain that one of us will be able to do it. How long ago was he pushed in there? The work was done approximately five days ago. I just arrived back so, in town two days ago. Are we sure that he's still there? We are not. So the only way we'll know for certain is if we go in and get him. However, any other prisoners that may be there don't most likely don't deserve the imprisonment that they're suffering there. Now, the question is, since we're going in the cover of night and cutting the power, is there any way you could potentially procure some, uh, some items from Smith and Robards? Such as? Maybe uh, mm. one one pair of ally goggles, just so we're not completely blind. Hmm. My funds are low, but I might be able to get us at least a couple of lanterns. Ally goggles are a tad expensive. I know they're a bit pricey, but how much are they? Um. Well, last I saw them in the catalog, they were about six hundred. Yeah, and they're going to be much more around here. Figure okay. at least a 75% markup. Yep, and plus the shipping cost. Yeah, I don't have quite that much.
But but I, can, but I do have enough that I can definitely supply us with appropriate light sources. I don't think you're going to have to worry about that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lacey. Oh, oh, there's a look of... It, it's not a daisy look. It's a... You always let the NPCs buy our stuff if we can afford it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. <laughs> you might need your money later and Lacey might be dead. I also might be dead. Money and doesn't spend itself it for of a body. lot of that see that's based. That's based. But also <laughs> I like Lacey and Lacey's Lacey's an absolute G and he doesn't deserve he said he literally said he doesn't have a lot of money. I'm not going to make him use his very limited resources. I have fucking oh, I have $425. I am good. Money. Like I mean, to and be you don't fair, think he's paying for it out of pocket. This is coming from the like whoever the organization. The organization it. Yeah, but like that that's still like resources that have to get to him and like a bunch of like there's there's a lot of hoops to jump through. I'm not gonna just like accept that for free. Any help he can offer that isn't monetary, I'm happy with. But like we're we're literally about to go to a prison break with this guy. I think we should pool resources. It doesn't seem like it's a the the it's he's like I, buy us I, a couple I, lanterns. What are you gonna buy us? Fucking better bitches, better money. <laughs> Papa John's. <laughs> um, this is all out of character. BTW, absolutely. Um, this this is like actually. Stuff. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> like more bitches, more money. Um, just screaming about fucking like how much money I have, like in the middle of a bar. Like I have so much money right now. Look at this. I'm not gonna let him buy lanterns for us. Are you kidding? Just screaming across the bar with a bunch of fucking mercenaries who come over to slit my throat and take my coin purse. Yes. Welcome, welcome to Cowboy Justice, where it doesn't matter if they don't get caught. It does not matter. No, he, he doesn't game with us very often. Like no, he he's not a long term. With you yet. Um. No, God, no. But like, yeah, this is. But I, like, I, I do never think want to do that. It again. Now, are you now quick question above board. Yeah. Um, we are in Los Angeles area, correct? Correct. Uh, would there by chance Jimbo still be around? Uh, Dr. Hellstrom's gym? Yeah, Jimbo. No, Jimbo, the. Uh, my, uh, my helper. That was helping guard guard the tunnel. He was helping guard the train. Yeah, um, from way back in that episode. Wasn't that me? No. No. Uh, I thought it was a character that I like technically like became. Uh, that's not him. Charlie Bell yeah, he... Buckner. Is that who you're thinking of? Oh, no, it man. was. No, it was uh, a random NPC that I made a connection with because oh. I arrested him once. Um, uh, we'll do a networking roll because you guys will have time. So, uh, did you do? You pull up that. Roll. And he liked you. Uh, he's been keeping his nose clean ever since I uh. Got him in trouble. And, and if, if I if I need to do. if I need to spend uh, one of my points of um, favors, I will do that if if it'll make him available. All right. So <clears throat> your choice: uh, persuasion or intimidation to figure out if he's around here. Oh man. Persuasion. Am I able to am I able to help him out with this? Yes. Kind of same kind of, thing. Yeah, just let me know which one you want to pick. Well, my persuasion's a D4, so it has a better chance to ace. My intimidation is a D6. So yeah, my, it's, persuasion it's a, on my persuasion is a my persuasion's a D8 with a re-roll on the roll. And yeah, we'll, my we'll intimidation do, we'll do is persuasion. also a D6. <laughs> we'll do persuasion. Anybody All right. else gonna help? Woo. I'll jump in for persuasion. Daisy? Uh, I am Luke, pretty you are persuasive. On blind roll. I'm what? 
Your your rolling is set to blind. Why? <laughs> Not sure. Huh. All right, Daisy is going to provide a plus two. You're welcome. Tilly is providing a plus one, so you're at plus three. Goodman is giving a plus one, so you're at a total of plus four from the aid. Alrighty. Now don't fail it. Uh, yeah, as long as I don't roll double ones, I should be pretty alright, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Plus four. <laughs> as he throws out a total of uh, on the dice of two. With a <clears throat> one on the other. And it stopped almost on a one, didn't it? Almost. Um, but that is enough. And yeah, you find that guy. Um, let me. Are we gonna make him go? And we are. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna come here and. I thought I had the regular gunman. Apparently not. So we will use a maze rat for his stats. You're expecting to fight. And rename him Jimbo. Now, theoretically, I could just take him to the prison and or, quote unquote arrest him to kind of uh, scope out. Actually, you would know that you would not have access to the prison. You are not a recognized authority in Los Angeles. Ah. Uh, Come on. Oh, you should not? know that. Very good. Yeah, the only people here who are counted officially as law dogs is um, Los law dogs? The, the guardian angels. What about doctors? Uh, they are not big believers in Western medicine. They believe in letting faith do the work. What about cute little eight-year-old girls who Definitely carry not. guns? <laughs> I don't right. think that's quite how the good Lord intended it, if I'm being perfectly honest. Okay. So I am going to advance the time. You don't think little girls should carry guns? Oops. I think all little girls should carry guns. I just think that we should live in a world where little girls don't have to carry guns. That's okay. I don't like my gun as much well as I like my um, uh, Bowie. All right. Bowie then I have to definitely suit you better. So. After you guys find Jimbo, adding an extra person to your posse. Nick, I gave you control over him. Perfect. And I will just add him to your uh, initiative card if initiative has to happen. And uh, so you guys get a move on. Doing this today? Tonight. I not give us much time. Hours pass, and uh, you guys meet his mason friend, who, for his safety, is wearing a hood, and he runs you out into the very choppy Lost Angels Bay. And as you're approaching in the dark, this uh, very short squat island, which also has a very blocky building that you can barely see in the moonlight. Um, <clears throat> Hold on, I just thought of something. What? That I probably should know already. But Lost Angels is San Francisco. Los Angeles. But we're going to... Shan Fan is San Francisco, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to the Rock. Yep. Which is in the San Francisco Bay. 
No, Alcatraz would have been in the San Francisco Bay. But San Francisco actually had to move, Shanfan actually had to move five or so miles inland because the rest of that land that it was on collapsed into the ocean. So this isn't really Alcatraz? No. In my mind, it was. And I was like, wait a second, we're not in the right city. I definitely is- changed my note. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we're going to find Sean Connery here. There could be only one. I am so glad you went with that Sean Connery reference over any other. That, that makes me wow. happy in my soul. Enjoy. <laughs> I'll give you that one for free. All right. And right before you guys get in close to the island, mayhem cuts loose. As you guys look out and you see several ships closing in, and then they open fire with Gatling guns and cannons. And you can see that the ships that are attacking are sampans, or basically the Chinese version of the ships. And this is what we expected. Yes. I'm not getting... At that point, Lacey nods for his friend to continue on in. And you guys get in close to the island, and there's a short pipe leading out of the side, this rocky side of the island that uh, looks to be roughly three feet in diameter. And as he pulls up and ties off to it, your uh, boat pilot reaches up and inside and he grabs hold of something and pulls it. And the whole grate just swings open. Now, there's barely a trickle of thick sludge coming out of the end, but the smell itself is something horrific. And uh, I am going to go ahead and open up the map that you guys are now heading Does it kind of smell like when I was outside the bathroom train? Much, much worse. And Chuck was sit not feeling well either. Damn, that's pretty brutal. All right. So the brown area that you guys are shown in there that's just the starting point you have the tunnel that leads in ahead of you who who is going to be brave and go first i'm only eight i don't have to go first Let's all speak up at once. I so I, I moved. I just kind of yeah. He, he yeah. actively moved, but they didn't say anything. Pardon right. me. So um, Cole, has, Cole uh, took took the initiative and moved directly into the tunnel for the audio listener friends. Uh, I do forget that audio listeners are important. Um, and I I moved up right behind him, um, as well as Chuck our our fun little friend. mercenary friend. Chuck's chilling. He's, he's around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me. I'm going to remove him because he's not coming in. He with gets the boat one, for the time being. He gets one whiff of the smell and he starts puking over the side of the boat. Incredible. Oh. It's okay, Chuck. All right. I'll take care of things for you. You stay here and keep us safe. So you guys pretty much have to crawl through this tunnel. Do I? Yep, I will yes. crawl up to here to let people crawl. start getting in. All right. And as you were moving up, You get to the end, and looking down into this cesspool, that's the only way to describe it. It, In the cesspool itself, there are various pieces of unidentifiable gore and a blubbery blubbery squid-like tentacle on the far side. Um, What are you going to do there, Cole? We all see it. No. no, you guys can't. Right now, Cole is the only one who can see it. And, and, and looking at the map, you guys should be able to see that uh, it does look pretty nasty down in there. And that tentacle was provided by the amazing artist Devin Knight. Uh, ImmortalKnights.com for his tokens. 
He crafted that just for this adventure. Is that tentacle currently moving or anything like that? Make a notice check. Uh, with a minus two because your eyes are burning. Um, no, you don't think so. It, it seems to just be floating there. Okay, I can now kind of see it's not attached to anything because I still have Jimbo's vision instead of my own. Ah. I was, I was like, because it cut off like right where it's cut off there. Okay. Um, on the far side over here, you see a ladder leading up out of the sludge. You're not sure how deep the sludge is, but uh, if you move your token over onto that white square that everybody can That's see. That's a teleporter. That is a teleporter. All right, let me see if I have anything fancy in my bags real quick. It does not look like it. All right. So what you're going to do? Well, I'm going to Let come to the, the very edge of this pipe here. Okay. okay. And kind of like peer around. And it seems stuff is kind of floating there. So what I'll actually do is... um if only you had a 10-foot pole. Right? That's <laughs> a collapsible 10-foot pole? Yeah. I'm trying to think of something in my backpack that I could just kind of like throw out there to see. Oh, my wife uh, just dropped her uh, crochet needle. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Yes, Miss Daisy. I'll let you use my dreidel. No, you hold on to that. I, what I'll actually do is I'll kind of reach into my jacket and grab out one of my uh, pairs of handcuffs and kind of toss it out there and see if it kind of like slowly sinks or if it just kind of plops. Um, as you pull out the handcuffs and you toss them out a few feet, they hit the water. There's a good splash. And uh, it causes ripples all through, as you would expect. It's not a thick sludge, but because the, the handcuffs disappear almost immediately. Okay. But we do not know how deep it is. No. How uh, far is it down from this pipe to the top of the, the sludge? About three feet. About three feet? Mm -hmm. Right now, loud Cassidy, we're done waiting. If you would like to get in, I would. I will go first if you want me to. We have places to be and appointments to make. <laughs> All right. So this pipe is protruding into the room somewhat. Yes, a little bit. Mm. Is there any way that I can kind of like swing out and stand on top of it? Is it wide enough to get any kind of foot holding even sideways? Uh, like a ledge or something to move around on? Uh, no, like on, the, on top of the pipe itself. Like I will come out oh, to the edge no. and kind of like pull myself on top. No, there's only like maybe a half an inch. Uh, okay, so ledge. nothing. Okay, because I was trying to gauge it based on the way the image is on the map and was thinking maybe it was like four or five inches or something like that. Nope, that was me uh, having a moment. Got it. Well, now let's see. It's about like what? Eight, 10 feet, 20 feet. Um, so what I had the boat won't fit back here. Will it? The what? The boat. Mm -mm. It won't fit in. Oh man. Were there life vests in the boat? Nope. Were the, was there a buoy? No. Or a, a circle saver thing? No. What if we would have fallen off on our way over here? 
I mean, that it's the 1880s. You're SOL. <laughs> Gift is kind of the <laughs> the way that God dealt with things back then. I think <laughs> that was kind of the vibe. Darwinism was absolutely a. Uh, yeah, it's not letting me do measure distance. Yeah, apparently I forgot to turn on rangefinder. Let me. Uh, I no, hate it's that that's cute to two things. So, did I not just. Yeah, it should just be control, but it's not doing it. Ah, there we go. It's stopping at the edge of the pipe for me. Yeah, let me see if there's a wall or something there. Nope, no walls. I'm going to move myself mm. like a slight inch. Oh, and now nope. Daisy is literally underfoot. Yeah, it literally won't let us move it into that area. We can't measure in there. It just has a big hazard on it with water. Ah, that's why. Yep. Oh, there went Daisy. Right no, here. I was just seeing if it would let us move in there. I'm sorry. I know why it's doing it now. Um, it's because that slows movement. Okay, because I haven't measured with difficult terrain on it. It still won't let me. Oh, hold on. Ooh. You can do it. It's about, let's see, about five and a half inches, which would be two yards per inch. So decent, yards. decent. It's a it's a good long jump. OK. And you said sludge is about three feet down. Yep. <coughs> I'm going to have a uh, good men hold on to my hands and I'm going to try to lower myself down into it. OK. I will. So I'm so what the lantern's hanging off your belt then like you've got that I'm trying to like make sure that everything's like balanced out as like how we're working this so you you get the lantern off that help I'm gonna grab you do the like my arms are crossed for your wrists so we can give you a nice strong fucking grip so you're not gonna be lowered too roughly into this yeah I mean I mean we can put the lantern on well back in there so it doesn't accidentally get knocked off into the sludge pit but in there so it's still shining light a little bit okay yeah like i'll hang it i'll hang it off my belt in the meantime like it's not that big a deal yeah all right just well, to, well, daisy daisy you can hold this for the time being and i'll give the the kid the lantern because this I'm is about to be a I've only ever yeah this is gonna be a fires. rough <laughs> that's upsetting but um okay and i'll help cole down into the muck okay <clears throat> so Daisy takes the lantern. Oh, there were three. <laughs> and Cole lays down and starts to scoot his feet over with Goodman holding on tight. And as Cole's feet hit the slop, the, uh, the sewer mess, that is where we will pick up next time. What? <laughs> I'm furious. Nah, I can't. I can't even fake the outrage from last week. I was so exhausted last week. Like, last time we played, I was out of it. I was so blasted. Like, What's in the box? Who's on the other side of the door? Like, just I. I can't. I honestly could not today. All right. So thanks for watching and/or listening, everyone. Um, if you love coffee, check out poppetscoffee.com. They do ship. And uh, definitely check us out on our socials. Our Twitter is at Night's Dinner. We're also on TikTok. We've got a few videos up there. Same thing, at Night's Dinner. And uh, if you want to help us out, go ahead and hit us up on our Patreon. We have merch there now, too. So we will see you next time. Thanks for watching and or listening, everybody. And have a great night. Man, I'm not your supervisor. Have a whatever night you want to have, but like... You're the master of your own destiny is kind of what I'm getting at. Bye, everybody.
This actual play podcast references the Savage Worlds game system and the Deadlands Weird West Savage setting, both of which are available from Pinnacle Entertainment Group at www.peginc.com. It is unofficial media content permitted under the Media Network Consent Agreement. This content is not managed, approved, or endorsed by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Certain portions of the materials used are the intellectual property of Pinnacle, and all rights are reserved. Savage Worlds, all related settings, and unique characters, locations, logos and trademarks are all copyright of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Tales from the Deadlands, Knights of the Smith Dinner Table, and all of its logos are property of Knightsmith Games, LLC. For more information, head to www.knightsofthesmithdinnertable.com.